welcome to the program Talking Politics, where we discuss a lot of issues uh, uh, that uh, has to do with the political development in the country. I am Al Hassan Bala. A lot of things uh, have been happening or have happened right from last week, uh, Thursday to uh, today. That is uh, barely one week, uh, ranging from the issue of uh, the tenure elongation of uh, uh, in the All Progressives Congress uh, uh, to the issue of uh, the looters list, uh, which was uh, actually released by the federal government, and uh, a lot of action has uh, uh, trailed that. Uh, 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 release of that uh, looters uh, uh, list by the uh, federal government and uh, also uh, another issue is security where uh, yesterday uh, the president actually approved uh, uh, the uh, actually release of uh, about uh, 360 billion naira that is one uh, one billion dollars uh, uh, money to procure uh, arms for the military uh, this is also getting another um, uh, reactions from uh, uh, the uh, security analysts as well as uh, uh, other uh, commentators. Uh, and then the issue of uh, uh, killings in uh, so many states, uh, uh, Taraba State, uh, Zamfara State, Benue State, and other, a lot of things uh, uh, that are happening in uh, Borno State uh, are also very disheartening. Uh, but um, uh, on this, we are going to actually watch a report by Ikaro Atta on the issue of the release of uh, uh, the one billion dollars uh, uh, arms uh, procurement by the president, which are uh, the minister of uh, the minister of uh, defense, Manur Ali, uh, made that known to the state house correspondent yesterday. Following the cancellation of Wednesday's Federal Executive Council meeting, President Muhammadu Buhari summoned the security meeting. The meeting, which lasted for over three hours, was held behind closed doors at the President's office. Briefing journalists on his way out, Defense Minister Mansoor Dan Ali says the President approved the release of one billion U.S. dollars to procure military hardware and ordered the security chiefs to ensure the release of Lia Sharibu, who is still being held by the Boko Haram insurgents for not willing to relinquish her fate. Uh, quarterly meeting of security agencies within the country and as usual we discuss the current activities that affected most of the states in the federation like Taraba, uh, Zampara and other states. Well, it has been also discussed. We are making all available effort to see that the girl is returned safely. He spoke on military operation in Zamfara State, assuring that the continued killing there would be halted. As usual, uh, we have is, uh, operationalized a division in Sokoto, and there will be a brigade in Katsina and another brigade in Zampara that will take care of the security uh, situation of that area. The number of, uh, I mean, the strength of the um, uh, military personnel have increased including the air force additional uh, uh, quick response group they have added enough manpower in that general area the national economic council neck had given president muhammadu buhari the approval to withdraw one billion u.s dollars from the federation account to procure military hardware to fight insurgency and other violent crimes across the country from the asura presidential villa amikaro <laughs> welcome back uh, the more especially the issue of uh, the Ampara state where uh, the minister said that uh, uh, they are going to have a brigade in Zampara state to actually cut uh, the security challenges uh, facing that uh, state where uh, almost every week we'll, we normally hear the issue of uh, uh, some number of persons have been killed either headsmen or farmers or uh, some bandits actually killing a lot of people and uh, as well the issue of um, uh, kidnapping in that very state uh, despite the fact that the governor of that state uh, is also the uh, the chairman Nigeria's governor's forum uh, on this issue uh, today we have the special advisor to the Dampra state governor on media and publicity that is uh, Ibrahim Dosara welcome to talking politics thank you uh, uh, viewers I'm happy to have me all right um, uh, looking at the security challenges uh, that is happening in your state, uh, that is the state that uh, your, 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 your boss is uh, happy to be the governor of that state. Uh, uh, firstly, uh, what 
what is actually happening in Zamfara State, looking at the fact that uh, before Zamfara used to be one of the most peaceful states uh, when you remove Sokoto State and uh, Jigawa State in the no northwestern part of the country? Well, um, uh, it's actually uh, true that Zamfara used to be the most peaceful state uh, in Nigeria. Uh, records have shown that. Uh, well, the issue of uh, insecurity in Zamfara State is a serious challenge and uh, secure insecurity in Nigeria is not only in Zamfara State but uh, the whole country uh, in general. But going back to Zamfara State, uh, the, the history of insecurity uh, began long ago, uh, but the issue within over the recent years. Uh, the most challenging security issues we have in Zamfara are basically three. One, the armed banditry, two, the cattle wrestling, and three, abduction or, or otherwise kidnapping. These are the basic uh, issues we have in Zamfara State. And historically, uh, the issue of insecurity, uh, like I said earlier, began long time ago. But over the years, uh, counting uh, from 2010 uh, to date, uh, the situation was more than ever before. And it, it predates to the issue of farmers, uh, herdsmen, or Fulani clash which gradually uh, transform over the years to another thing where uh, because of the porous nature of our borders, uh, because of the uh, neighborhood we have with Libya, Mali and other countries where uh, we have uh, the issue of uh, insecurity made such uh, persons to uh, infiltrate into our areas, particularly Zamfara State, and because Zamfara State is uh, bordered with the thick forests, that has given the leverage for the criminals to have hideout, and uh, this is why the issue continued to aggravate, and with the uh, serious uh, challenge on Boko Haram in Northeast, also displacing some of the uh, Boko Haram insurgents, uh, also uh, felt uh, easy to penetrate into the thick forest around Zamfara State. And this is why we have uh, so many uh, insurgents uh, coming into the forest and uh, begin to uh, carry out their criminal activities. And because of the worry the community in Zamfara State have, uh, the local people began to uh, group themselves into what we call NSAK uh, to face uh, JTF. yeah well that's not what we call them it's, it's really in JTF you call them in, in northeastern Nigeria but in Zamfara State we call them NSAK uh, these what are NGOs? volunteers who uh, feel they should get up and defend themselves against the criminality of the insurgents who are flushed out of northeast and uh, some from the uh, Libyan uh, country and some from Mali and some from uh, Niger Republic. Uh, and that was what began to uh, happen uh, at the early uh, days of 2011. All right, basically, uh, recently we had the news that. Uh, uh, the mastermind or the leader of those uh, bandits or more especially those that have perpetrated the act of killing as well as uh, kidnapping people in, in Zamfara State uh, popularly known as Buhari Ndaji was killed by uh, some, uh, by his associate or his own uh, member but um, what is the Zamfara State doing to ensure that the peace of that state come back Looking at the fact, since he has been killed, and his members now are vowing to come back to be perpetrating another act. Well, um, it is true. Uh, recently, the leader of the uh, cattle wrestlers, uh, popularly known as Buhari Ndaji, was killed by some repentant uh, um, insurgents or or cattle wrestlers. 
uh, if you like it. And uh, because of that, uh, or rather, before then, the Zamfara State Government was up and doing to ensure that uh, there is peace, there is adequate security of life and property in the state. And uh, Zamfara State Government, under the leadership of His Excellency Abdulaziz Yari Abubakar, has been uh, spending huge amount of money, has been taking serious I mean, measures, consulting with security uh, uh, top officials to plan and ensure that uh, the normalcy is restored in Zamfara State, uh, which in fact, uh, because of such measures, uh, led to some people repenting from committing such criminality and uh, they gang up and killed the, the leader uh, of recent time. And uh, it is true, uh, even before his death, he proclaimed that uh, even after his death, he was going to uh, ensure that his people uh, made Zamfara a very difficult uh, place to stay. But because of the security uh, personnel, because of the power of the uh, Nigerian security agencies uh, and the collaboration with Zamfara State Government, uh, we are doing everything humanly possible to ensure that lives of people and their properties are being secured in Zamfara State. And uh, like I told you, uh, we have been doing all we're supposed to do. Uh, those security issues are not to be discussed on, on air or any, any medium, uh, but I can assure you that Zamfara State Government is uh, on the top gear uh, in collaboration with the military uh, agencies to ensure that things are put to normal. The governor uh, has given an order to the security agencies in that state to uh, shoot, to kill to anybody who was seen or has been seen with a gun or uh, which um, uh, we, we saw pictures showing a lot of people just roaming about in Dampara State, in some part of Dampara State with the AK-47 and uh, uh, a lot of uh, citizens there are saying that uh, they are not getting any resistance from the security agents. Well, um, the order was given recently by His Excellency, uh, precisely last week that people who felt they cannot abide by the rules and regulations of the community, they go about carrying AK-47, uh, roaming about in the streets of the towns and villages, that since it became very necessary for the government to take that action and uh, decided that uh, uh, security agents should ensure that whoever is seen carrying AK-47 precisely, not every gun, but AK-47, and that was what the governor said, AK-47, if you are seen with it roaming uh, in the community, uh, then you should be uh, sh shot and killed. Uh, that is the order given by the government. And if you, you take into cognizance the importance of security uh, of people and their property, uh, the, the, that order is in consonance with the uh, with subsection three, uh, section one of Nigeria's uh, Armed Robbery and Firearms Act, uh, which has given the governor to decide either to kill uh, or or to 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 carry any any punishment against anybody found. Uh, committing or attempting to commit Why did it take him so long to give an order like this? Looking at the fact that uh, these atrocities that is made by these uh, alleged criminals has been happening uh, right from a year to his emergence as the governor. That is 20, uh, 2010. Well, you see, um, the, the essence of governance is to secure lives or, or security is the essence of governance. You, you need to provide security for lives, security of uh, property, and the food security and others, and, and so on. Now, uh, it is very difficult to govern because by the time you take a decision, uh, you either make some people happy or you make them unhappy. Uh, so the governor 
has been working, like I told you, in, uh, in, 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 in association with security or military agencies in Nigeria. And uh, he worked on their advice, he worked on their guidance, uh, though he is the chief security officer of the state, but he has to make some consultations before, before taking any uh, decision. Uh, because like I told you, governance is, is something very difficult. Uh, you have to take some decisions, you have to weigh them, you have to consider certain things. And based on the professional advice from the military and other security agencies, uh, the governor had been acting until when uh, it became necessary uh, for him to take the uh, recent action. Okay, there are a lot of uh, legislations that uh, he has not been staying in the state, which uh, give room to all the uh, criminal activities. How true is that? Because uh, uh, those that are saying they say he is normally in Abuja or out of the country. Well, um, uh, I, I don't believe that it is because he is not staying in the state that we have that problem. Because if you said so, what about Borno? What about Yobe? Uh, let's assume their governors are not going anywhere, but the insecurity there, uh, I can say, is more than Zamfara State. Uh, so it's not an, an issue of uh, the governor is not staying in the state. That is why there is insecurity. I told you the nature of our uh, security challenges, and I told you why they are happening. And uh, in fact, he has to. Uh, go out to make consultations with the military agencies and uh, other security agencies to tackle the situation. And that is why, uh, coupled with the responsibilities he has as the chairman of Nigeria Governors Forum, where he's always being needed at the center, and that he has to be coming here to uh, make consultations for both the security uh, solution and then the issue of uh, Nigeria Governors Forum Affairs. Uh, this is why he has been coming to Abuja here. But the, the issue of the insecurity is, is high because he is not there. Uh, I don't think this is correct. All right, um, there is uh, a particular senator uh, from Zambra State, uh, Marava, is alleging that uh, the governor is not willing to actually solve the security problem because uh, he alleged that the governor is benefiting from it. How true is that? Well, it will be very surprising uh, for somebody uh, of that nature, somebody who is a highly respected lawmaker, to say that somebody who is uh, the chief security officer of his state is benefiting from the activities of criminals in his state. I, I, don't, I don't think any right-thinking person should believe in this. and. Uh, uh, I believe uh, he has responsibility to the people of Zamfara State. If there is anything he sees going wrong, he ought to have come uh, to Zamfara as an elder statesman. Uh, the governor's doors are always open to anybody, especially those people uh, who are the stakeholders, who are the elder statesmen. Uh, recently, uh, the, the, the elders of the state invited the governor uh, to discuss issues of the insecurity situation and the governor went personally to where they asked him to come. So that shows that the governor is very much willing to cooperate with whoever is interested in helping the state government to overcome the problem uh, the state is facing in the area of insecurity and any other area, uh, not only that. So for him uh, to say that uh, the governor is benefiting out of it, how? What will the governor uh, benefit from criminality in his state? You should understand that he is the leader of the state and uh, he, all he needs is to have peace in his state so that he can rule the state uh, conveniently. And uh, when there is no security, there is no how the governor can uh, rule the state conveniently. So this is just, uh, uh, I mean, to me, it's out of sense uh, talking 
saying that uh, the governor is benefiting from the criminality of insurgents in the state. A little this bit is quite away, untrue. A little bit away from security. Okay. Safra State is one of the is among the poorest uh, state in the country, mm -hmm. and it has a very high rate of uh, uh, illiteracy. Um, with the, the issue of the security, with the issue of uh, uh, dilapidated uh, hospitals in that state, uh, when we talk about uh, healthcare facilities and the issue of schools, what, are you, uh, what is the governor doing to ensure these infrastructures, the most important to humans, are being cut out for the streets? Well, uh, in the first place, I can tell you this is untrue. The statement you, you made is untrue. Um, I can confidently tell you that uh, Zamfara State Governor Abdulaziz Yari Abubakar is one of the most hard-working governors in Nigeria. Uh, you take the sector of education, you are invited, uh, you and colleagues and whoever is doubting it, come to Zamfara State and, and see the education facilities the governor provided. Uh, there is a convenient uh, environment for learning. There is convenient environment for the teachers. There is convenient environment for the students as well. So for somebody to say that uh, the governor is having dilapidated structures in education, this is completely untrue. And uh, I challenge anybody who is having this notion to come to Zamfara and see. Uh, then the issue of health also. I also challenge anybody who is saying that the, the government of Zamfara State under the distinguished chairmanship of uh, His Excellency Abdulaziz Yari Abubakar is having dilapidated structure of hospitals. This is untrue. I challenge anybody having this notion to go to Zamfara. But there was and a report Andrei. on the, uh, one of the major uh, newspapers that says uh, uh, Zamfara State have, when you look at the number of, uh, uh, of persons there, I think uh, they say about... Uh, uh, how many hundred of people per one medical doctor, which uh, even the medical doctors are in Gusau. Yeah, in the but, but what you are talking about is the infrastructure we are talking about. You, you are not talking about the manpower. manpower. Well. That's why I told you infrastructure. I can beat my chest to say that we have done enough for the infrastructure. Uh, the governor uh, was able to to construct so many uh, hospitals uh, and he he upgraded some of the primary health centers to general hospitals he also constructed a specialist hospital which is catering not only for zamfara state but, but even states around zamfara are coming to take uh, medicine or, or, or medical services in that specialist hospital and uh, he also upgraded some uh, dispensaries to primary health centers I can assure you that as far as uh, health sector facilities are concerned, the governor has done uh, wonderfully well, and I challenge anybody who wants to see to come to Zamfara and see for himself these things. If you talk about manpower in the health sector, yes, quite agree. Uh, we have shortage of uh, manpower in the health sector, and uh, uh, this is uh, due to uh, so many factors because it is not only Zamfara said that is having the shortfall in the health um, in, in, in manpower in the health sectors all other states of the federation in fact including the federal government is not having adequate manpower in all its hospitals uh, this I can challenge you but what the governor is doing is to try to get uh, professionals outside the country particularly people of uh, Nigerian origin or people from Zamfara State uh, who are working outside the country. And in fact, we have been securing some of them. Uh, uh, one of them is uh, from South Africa. He's now heading one of the hospitals and uh, he's providing a lot of services to the people. And just of recent, His Excellency ordered for the recruitment of 100 doctors, uh, medical doctors, to be posted into the uh, I mean, uh, hospitals, uh, either renovated or, or reconstructed or rebuilt, and then also ordered the uh, recruitment of other health workers uh, up to 200 in number, and uh, the exercise is ongoing now. And that is to show to you how His Excellency is uh, also concerned about the health 
being of his people. All right, thank so, you. So th th thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ibrahim Basara, uh, for coming to talk in politics where we discuss a lot of things that uh, are happening in your state and uh, you shed more light on uh, uh, what uh, your 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 post uh, as the governor of Zambra State is uh, is to we have been discussing with the special advisor to the Zambra State Governor, uh, Mr. Ibrahim Dosara, on the issue of insecurity in the state and uh, as well as other uh, issues that uh, has to do with uh, that state. And that's much we have for today. Until next week, when we are going to come with uh, another topic and discuss uh, uh, with uh, another case on a lot of issues that has to do with uh, politics in the country. I am Al Hasan Bala. See you then.